And though I haven't quite pinpointed it yet, somewhere between my daddy's youth and mine, generational aspirations for a richer democracy changed to aspirations for a richer me. More wealth and more leisure time for a lower quality of work. Oh, yes. <laughs> and forget about our political process. Voting became too much of a bore let alone keeping an eye on how our tax dollars were being squandered or how our interests were being poorly served by elected officials. When did we begin to lose faith in our ability to affect change? Perhaps the demoralizing murders of John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King. Maybe they scared the civic-minded young people of the 1960s right out of their idealism into despair and then to indifference. Perhaps it was the 1980s when the opportunity inherent in the American dream was distorted from the land of we to the land of to hell with anybody else but me. Should my generation expect yours to be the watchdogs of this effort? Should we expect you to monitor how our leaders handle the responsibility to restore our city? Well, my generation might not because we haven't been very good watchdogs ourselves, but I do. Believe me, I expect y'all to be different than the example we've set for you. Don't you wait for somebody else to do later what you can do now. When you perceive a problem, instead of speaking about it in dorm rooms or in hushed corners of bars or even loudly in bars, <laughs> put together a group of friends and be very loud and public in your dissent. When you notice inconsistencies between what is said by government officials and what is done, exercise your individual and collective power to take steps to remove them. Our form of democracy allows you to do that. You know democracy is a can-do form. We always hear about the rights of democracy. But the major responsibility of it is participation. Throughout American history, we have seen causes for the betterment of our democracy invigorated by young people unafraid to fight for the general welfare of all people, even if it meant at times and very seriously alienation from their own families. Don't you be disheartened by the destruction of the hurricane or by political ineptitude or even by apathy in others. Remember, we are all home. And what is more dysfunctional than being home? <laughs> now is the time for your generation to reclaim the energy, optimism, and fire that is the real American spirit. I'm confident that you students can and will make an incalculable contribution to the intelligent and compassionate rebuilding of our city and protection of our dispersed populace. In doing so, you will be using your collective power to redefine the soul of our nation, to redefine the meaning of being an American. I want you to look at people, I want you to understand. We come from a common experience. We come from a common experience. I've traveled the world. And one thing I learned around the world, I am an American. Believe me, this is something that I know to be true and understand. I want y'all to look around this room and I want you to understand that there are forces all around you who wish to exploit divisions to rob you of your freedom and tell you what to think. They are afraid of change. And some of these forces are even within you. But I'm here to tell you tonight, when young folks are motivated to action, and when they act with insight, soul, and fire, they can rekindle the weary spirit of a slumbering nation. It's time somebody woke us up. And that's why I urge you, do not let this moment pass without sending a clear message to your peers and elders around the world. New Orleans will be rebuilt, and it will be rebuilt with an intensity, with an intelligence, with an impatience, and 
and with a freshness that only serious-minded young people can bring. One of the great lessons of the civil rights movement, when the minds and hearts of enough citizens are focused on change, America changes very quickly.